Two centuries ago, fishermen from the Mozambique coast found refuge on the uninhabited islands of the Bazaruto archipelago. In these windswept landscapes, amid the sand dunes, mangroves, and sea currents, they built an egalitarian society. Even today, their descendants, the Vahokas, continue to live according to these values, sharing the fruits of nature. You guys have to row harder. Come on, lazy. Harder, Mark. <laughs> Today is a big day for us. It's the beginning of the fishing season. We finish pulling in the slack, cast the net into the water. Okay. At the age of 27, Li Wan has his own Tao, which means he's a man who commands respect. When he speaks, the whole community listens. This is a really beautiful day for my people because without fishing, we'd have nothing to eat and a very poor life. Mm -hmm. After casting the net one kilometer from the coast, we return to the beach. The whole village is gathered to drag the net, which weighs several tons. You can head back down. Wait, I'll untie it. We're heading back down. He'll get tired if he pulls like that. <laughs> Go, only one! Don't force it, Mark. There's no point. Do we pull the net for long? Yes, three hours. Three hours? This goes on for three hours. <laughs> one look at the faces tells you that the fishing was good. For the Vaucas, it's a good omen. It means that this year, the waters of the archipelago will be full of fish. The coming campaign should feed the entire village. The fish we are picking out now are for the ceremony. You need different fish, big, small, black, white. And the small fish are thrown back. <laughs> right in the face. It's full of life. <laughs> Fishing is vital for the Vahokas. It allows them to feed themselves, but also to barter with people on the mainland. Under the watchful eyes of the elders, the fish is shared out amongst all the families. Equity is at the root of all social organization. Without it, this community of sailors could not survive. The songs and dances of the women honor their deceased ancestors, thanking them for this miraculous catch, which marks a return to abundance after several difficult months. The Bazaruto archipelago is located about 15 kilometers from the coast of Mozambique. But strong winds, currents, and sandbanks cut these islands off from the rest of the continent. Bazaruto is the largest of the archipelago's five islands. Around 3,000 people live there, mostly Bahokas, divided into seven communities. Lewan lives in the west of the island, in a hut in a camp sheltered from the wind by the huge dunes that cover the island. Go get some chairs. Mm. 
This is your entire family? Yep, they're all part of my family. My mother, wife, children, nephews, and nieces. It's a lot of people. Yes, we're a large family. But everyone is a member of the Zivani family. The Zivani family? Yes, it means strength. Every morning, they all look up to me. I have to find them food, pay for their school, and everything else. You're the head of the family? Yes, I'm the family chief. I feel responsible for everyone here. <laughs> Since the death of his older brother, Liwan has also taken care of his five nephews. He raises them as his own children. Feeding the 19 people who live under his roof is a daily concern. It's ready. Thank you. Share that with your brothers. Leave some for the others. Hey. Children, sit down and be nice. We share. And after, you wash your hands. It's very good. Our people, the Vahokas, were born from a man and a woman who came from the mainland to Bazaruto, fleeing the war. They came in canoes. But when they landed, they realized they were all alone on the archipelago. So they hooked up, started to have children. Their family name was Zivani, like almost everyone on this island today. It's a bit like the story of Adam and Eve. Yes, but at that time, it wasn't easy to find food. They ate whatever they could. They started fishing because they had more and more children to feed and there wasn't enough food on the land. Now it's my turn to fish for the Zivani family. Tomorrow we'll have to go fishing a long way away. We'll head out to sea for two or three days so that we can find plenty of food before coming back. We aren't taking much for two days of fishing. No, but that's how we do it. We use what we take, the rest we'll find on the spot. We'll fish it. On board, all the crew are members of Lei Wan's family. With him are his two younger brothers, his uncle and his two cousins. We head northwest of Bazaruto, where the warm, shallow waters abound with fish. You can give me a hand. Come on, hoist on this side. You want me to pull? Yes, go ahead. Ah, I see. <laughs> Come back down. Doesn't matter. Keep me steady. Okay, no problem. Pretty good. Thank <laughs> you. 
He won't go any further. Go back, so. Just That's good. The wind is strong. Yeah. Come with me, Mark. Can you loosen the end? Loosen it. Hold the rudder. Pull. Not too much. You need to control the dow. Otherwise, we might capsize. I'll be careful. Mind the wind. Hold the bar tight. All right. Push it. Pull. Now push. <laughs> yes. Push. push. Uh, okay. Let's see. see. Okay, it's hard to steer. <laughs> they won. Yeah. Okay. The swell and the wind blowing at more than 50 kilometers an hour could at any moment rip the tarpaulin that's acting as a sail and capsize the boat. The wind has started to shift. Navigating in these conditions is a real balancing act. As soon as any kind of wind gets up, the dow begins to list dangerously. A stabilizer with sandbags. The wind is too strong here. We'll take shelter in the mangrove. Slack it off a little. Have you got enough rope? Not really. Have you tied the sheet? Yeah, I've done that. Fasten it tight. As we get closer to the coast. To land? Yes. The wind drops because of the shelter provided by the island. Is it calmer ashore? Yes, the sand dunes act as wind breaks. But further out at sea, the wind is much stronger because it comes directly from the Indian Ocean. Okay, 